I'm working on a documentary edition of a diary that Jefferson's granddaughter kept. Uh, and her name is Ellen Wales Randolph Coolidge. And in the process of researching the diary, um, which was of a, a trip she made to London in 1838 and 39, I was doing a little work on the history of her husband, Joseph Coolidge. And the Coolidge family has been amazing donors and resources for Monticello. But as I asked the question, do you have any of the Coolidge volumes uh, in your collection, they would say no. Uh, no one seemed to know where exactly the library had gone. And as I'm researching his career at Harvard, um, up pops a reference to a gift of his library to Washington University in St. Louis, and it was in a Harvard alumni magazine of 1880. When Anne discovered this reference to Joseph Coolidge's library coming to Washington University, she shared that with me and instantly we knew that there was a great possibility that Jefferson's original books would be in this collection as well. Within Special Collections, we've acquired our materials many different ways. Some were individual purchase, many were gifts over the 150 plus years that Washington University has been a university. So in 1829 there was a sale of uh, Jefferson's retirement library and we know that there were letters, there's a letter from Joseph Coolidge, his grandson-in-law, asking for particular volumes from that sale that both he and Ellen wanted and it's important to think too that this is Ellen's library as well as Joseph's because there are volumes that were associated with her youth and upbringing at Monticello. So from that letter, um, Jefferson's other grandson-in-law made a list of volumes he was looking to purchase for Coolidge. So we were able to track the volumes through correspondence, through auction catalogs, and ultimately the final proof is that Jefferson marks each of his volumes in a particular way. Typically he would put it, he would add a T in front of the I signature in the book, and then he would add a I at the back of the T signature in the book. And when we started pulling books from the, the rare book stacks that we had begun to identify as Coolidge, we found copies of books that obviously were once in Thomas Jefferson's library. We were able to pull out the Coolidge books because of a ledger that we found in our university archives of the books that were in the collection when we moved from downtown to this campus. And they were indicated with a tiny little C. For me, it's a great window into a collection that I had sort of imagined existed based on Ellen Coolidge's writing. But it goes even further than that because it takes us to Jefferson's bookshelves when he's designing the University of Virginia. And there are volumes in this collection that scholars have always wondered where they were. Um, we know Jefferson referenced particular architecture volumes as he's designing the university and as he's discussing its construction with the workmen. And these volumes are at Washington University. These books have been lost to scholars for over 130 years, essentially. And so together with Jefferson's letters, his, his notebooks, all that we know about him, this would add an added dimension to just a greater understanding of Jefferson and to understand his life at Monticello. There were two particular ones that, uh, that are really interesting to us. One is Aristotle's Politica. In fact, it's uh, the volume right at the bottom here. Uh, it was one of the volumes that we know Jefferson um, had or with him or read before his death uh, on July 4th, 1826. And the other is, a, uh, is Plutarch's Lives, Volume 2, in which we found a slip of um, Greek writing uh, in Jefferson's hand. There's one other set of, of volumes that actually pertain to architecture that have a great sentimental story as well as an importance to um, architecture. And that's a set of three volumes by Milizia on um, civil architecture. And they were a gift to Jefferson from Joseph Coolidge the first time he met Jefferson, um, before he'd ever met his future wife, he came to Monticello in May 1824 and presented Jefferson with these three volumes. And Jefferson, in his response, thanking him for the volume, says he plans to use them as part of the lectures um, at the university on architecture. And that's here with the inscription from Joseph Coolidge to Jefferson.